Now that we have learned about the importance of data in machine learning and the most important concepts to understand when working in the area of machine learning, we need one more component before we can start diving into our algorithms. Thus, in this module, we will talk about how to evaluate our machine learning models and understand how well they actually perform. Before we can start with different methods to evaluate our models, we need to reflect on one very important point again. Our models heavily depend on the available data. We have already spent plenty of time on discussing why good quality and completeness of our data is important, but this is not the point of this video. Imagine you spend all your money on building the perfect car. And with perfect, I mean it has the absolute best numbers of any car. Acceleration, high speed, efficiency, and so on. But all of that only exists in your small but shiny factory, as you have just built the car. You now want to show the world how good of a car you have built and bring it to the test on the racetrack, to see how it competes against new competitors. But there is one big problem. As you have spent all of your money on building your car, there is nothing left to fund such an event, or even just for buying some fuel for your car. The story I want to tell here is that you need to ration your resources not only for creating the best possible car, but also in a way that you have enough left to test it, improve on it, and finally let it compete. In a very similar fashion, we also want to do this with our model. As we have already talked about, machine learning models look at the data we give it and try to find suitable patterns for the task we ask it to do. For example, to classify pictures of dogs and cats. Unfortunately, however, we will never be able to create a dataset that includes every possible picture of every cat and dog that exist in the world. This becomes even more difficult when we realize that we would also need to have all pictures of all cats and dogs in the past and the future. Therefore, we will split our dataset into different subsets. For the main cause of training our model to perform a task, we will create a subset that we call training set. If we think of supervised learning, the training set will include all the labels of the data points and present them to our model to learn. Now we can already evaluate how good our model performs on this subset, but we also want to know its performance on data points it hasn't seen. For this purpose, we create a second subset of our data called validation set. As the name suggests, this subset is mainly used to evaluate our model. Or in other words, our model will not see any of the data points during training. The validation set is usually used to check on the performance of a machine learning model on unseen data, which means we evaluate how well the model generalizes to new data points. We can then optimize our model by redefining some of its parameters, training it again, and comparing the performance using the validation set. Ideally, we repeat this step for a couple of different model settings to find the best possible model. Best possible here means the model with the best performance on the validation set. This procedure also makes sure that we do not overfit on our training data, as this can be seen by a lower performance on the validation set. So are we done here now? We created a good split of training and validation data to make sure that we find a good model, which also works well on new data. So that should be it, right? Well, almost. As the validation set influences our choices for optimizing the model, we can argue that we still run into the potential problem of overfitting to our data. So how do we get an unbiased evaluation of our model, which can be compared with competitors? The solution to this is yet another subset of our dataset, which we will call the test set. This subset is kept a secret to our model until the very end, after we are done optimizing and finding the best model, and taking a break probably. We evaluate our model on the test set to get an understanding of how well it performs on new data, and that's it. You might want to write it down or report it somewhere, but we're not trying to further optimize our model to get a better result on a test set, as this would inflict bias towards our data once again. So to sum up all of what was discussed very briefly, we take our original data set and create three different splits, the training set, validation set, and test set. Usually the training set is the biggest of all, as this is used to make our model learn. The validation set is a smaller subset, which is used to optimize our model with regards to its performance on unseen data. And last but not least, the test set is a smaller subset used to report the performance of our final model and compare it to other methods. In a lot of examples, you will find a split that looks something like 70% training set, 20% validation set, and 10% test set. But this can vary depending on how much data you have. So for example, you have a huge amount of data, you can then use more for validation and test as you have enough for training anyway. But also in the case of smaller datasets, you might want to keep more for validation and test. This can be the case if the only way to include all possible labels of your dataset is to have a bigger validation and test set.